Hello, this is Daniel March once again at MCV 2017, and I am here with Camus Wayne. He's the director of this short film called Tesla, Tesla. Um, based on Nikola Tesla. And yeah, a really interesting film to say the least. And basically, how did you even come up with the idea of to make a small little biopic on, on Nikola Tesla? Uh, well, I was very interested in Tesla, per se, when I met, uh, you know, when I found out about him, and uh, I read a lot of books, uh, watched a lot of videos, of course. and um, I, I didn't want to do a feature film, it's a big feat, so I decided to do a short film. Actually, first I wanted to do a, a um, documentary? No, I wanted to do a commercial that kind of involved the Tesla car and yes. revolve around that idea, but then I said, you know what, if I'm going to do a, a commercial, I might as well just do a short, short film. Yeah. And so uh, I learned as much as I could about Tesla, um, and then I wrote the story, and then we executed and shot it. Do you have a Tesla car? I don't yet. <laughs> I hope to have one day. Yes. Um, and what about his life interest, interested you so much? Like, is there anything specific that interested, interested you? Well, Tesla uh, kind of comes off as the underdog. Um, he was a unique scientist that was kind of forgotten by history, the history books and you know, he's, he's been known but it's been kind of uh, tucked away and uh, you know, not mentioned so much and so often uh, for various reasons. Uh, he had a collaboration with uh, J.P. J. Pierpont Morgan, as we know J.P. Morgan and that eventually that relationship kind of turned sour, you know, the, um, J.P. Morgan thought Tesla was going to build for him the first uh, radio tower and telecommunication tower. Yeah. Uh, Tesla kind of misled him and he used the tower, the Warden Clive in New Jersey, he used the tower to um, to do conduct his own research in the transmission of wireless electricity. And so when Guglielmo uh, Marconi made the first phone call from Europe to America, uh, J.P. Morgan summoned Tesla and told me, listen, uh, I'm on my pain here. A lot of people have been thinking already on the phone with you. What are you doing? And Tesla told him, well, I was really doing uh, wireless electricity. So in a week or so, uh, Morgan sent people and they, they cut off the funding, they destroyed the tower, and uh, Tesla's research destroyed almost like his reputation was destroyed. He was blacklisted from credit with any banker or credit in New York. So. Uh, yeah, yeah, and I believe he had a small little rivalry with uh, Ben Franklin as well. Ben Franklin, sure. <laughs> he, he had a rivalry with uh, Thomas Edison. That's what it was. Thomas Edison. Yeah. Uh, well, there was something called the War of the Currents. Yeah. In the 1800s, it began with the alternate current and direct current, the AC/DC, mm -hmm. and uh, Thomas Edison tried in various. Uh, situation to discredit Tesla's in, in the alternate current electricity in terms of, you know, uh, powering the poles, and etc. So, um, Tesla and um, George Westinghouse formed, you know, they, they, Westinghouse bought Tesla's patents. Uh, they eventually won the Columbia uh, Fair uh, bid to build the first hydroelectric station in Niagara Falls, okay. and uh, Westinghouse, you know, you know, Westinghouse um, Electric, they, they, they built it, and uh, they were very successful. Uh, and meanwhile, Edison joined force with uh, J.P. Morgan. They created G General Electric. So, so the war of the currents was between them. They were, you know, G was trying to sabotage in a way uh, Westinghouse. Uh, but eventually, you know, today, you know, we have alternate electricity on the power lines, which is transferred from long distances. Yeah. Yeah. So the whole idea that uh, Thomas Edison had was to, to power homes with direct current, but direct current, I'm not an electrician, so I'm, I'm told with lame course, I'll tell you in layman, layman's terms. You had the resistance was so big with the direct current that, that you have to have cables as thick as your arm mm -hmm. in order to trans to power homes, you know. And you were supposed to have like an electrical station, substation every mile. Okay. And now we have like one power station somewhere far away, mm -hmm. and a cable this thick. You transmit through alternate current. You transmit electricity miles and miles away. Yeah, yeah. 
Uh, yeah, that is frequently actually you start thinking about it. How you know I was just, like this big, okay, able to make the then I was like that big. Because the alternate kind of has a two sine wave. They they, they alternate the phases. Yeah. The direct current apparently is just on one straight stream and creates generates a lot more you know bigger wire, uh, thicker wire, and, you know creates more heat. So. Uh, before this film, have you done any other projects? Yeah, I did a. Um, I have a feature film in the works that I still have to finish. It's called Branded Faith. Okay. Uh, it's an action drama. Um, I did a, a short film commercial for Coca Cola. It's called uh, The Bottle. Okay. And it, it won the best Coca Cola commercial in Bentonville Film Festival, Arkansas. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, and I'm working on a couple other projects. Nice. Uh, do you need a cast, anybody? Sure. We're always looking for great actors. You got one right here. Characters, all right? So we'll we, consider we, you, definitely. You got my contacts. I guess you um, And um, how was it? For this film specifically, how did you go about with the casting, with, for casting Tesla? Well, Tesla was Croatian, so he had a slight accent, yeah. you know, Slavic accent. I, I'm from Bulgaria originally, so. I think I have the same accent, so uh, I wasn't perfect for the role, although I played it because I had no other choice, I couldn't find any uh, suitable actor. I found actually one Russian gentleman, okay. he was perfect. Unfortunately, he was living in the United yeah. States the next day, <laughs> and I met him at Publix. <laughs> so so he, I, I couldn't use him, he was gone, and so I said, you know, I have to film this. So I, I, I grew a mustache in like less than a month. Oh, wow. I let my hair grow oh, facial hair. Hey, I lost about 20 team pounds because yeah, the Tesla was very thin. Yeah. 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 It was about 6'4", yeah. I believe, and uh, yeah. 165 yeah. or 75 yeah. pounds. So yeah. Yeah. his body mass was, was, it was very thin. Okay. Plus, the lens adds 10 pounds to your face, so you have to look very thin. So I lost a lot of weight in order to look at the My wife. Uh, and uh, she played uh, Catherine, Tesla's love interest. Uh, the two, uh, the landlord and the um, what George Westinghouse, they were played by two of my school professors, my Indian college professors. And Thomas Edison was played by a friend of mine who actually resembled him. Mm -hmm. I actually didn't realize that you were Tesla and I was going to speak about it. Uh, I, guess well, I, I guess I fooled you. <laughs> yeah, good acting. <laughs> Thanks. Um, so, so yeah, um, you said you yeah, grew, grew a mustache kinda, and yeah, lost like, a couple like pounds to your train. Was that difficult yeah, in any way? Cool, it, was uh, really it actually, I was. It, that wasn't difficult because I've done it before for other movies. Like, you know, like, I guess like, when I put my mind to it, oh, my will, and I can lose the weight. It's to be a personal trainer, so you know, <laughs> yeah. you know, I know that I have to feed myself and what, what not to do. With so, uh, in terms of the character, portraying the character, I have read so much about it that I was so into it that I, I, at that point I thought I was testing. <laughs> and how long did it take us to actually shoot the whole film? It, it took us about a week and a half to two weeks, uh, only shooting uh, a couple hours at night. Okay. Because we won't go to work, we won't go to school. So, oh. so uh, our our home was it was shot in our home. It was it was made like a Tesla's office. Yeah. And we lived there for like two or three weeks like this. Mm -hmm. um, so. Yeah, and then about I'm assuming like two or three months in post. Yeah, it took about two or three months in post, uh, and I'm constantly working on it, improving things because the more I watch it, the more I see that the more mistakes I see, the more things okay. that I can fix. It's a never ending, you know, <laughs> that's a story. Of, that's a life of the director. Yeah, yeah. I mean, overall, I mean, I think the movie is really good. In my opinion, I can't really, I can't stop thinking about it. I mean, I've seen so many films uh, from yesterday and today, short films and feature films, and definitely it is one of the better ones I've seen here. Um, over, I really do enjoy it. And if you were, let's say, for example, you were to make a full length biopic on Tesla, would you consider it? Oh, right, yeah, I'd love to. Would you play him again? If I have the right funding, I would love to do it. By the way, uh, this was probably the only film that was based on a semi uh, true life story because it's, it's part of the life of Tesla. And the fiction was the way I try to tell a story in 10 minutes. That's the whole fiction. But all the, the events and everything that's happened is pretty much true. Yeah. What Tesla was able to do. Nice. And for the like the set design for to make your house look like Tesla's office, exactly like what did, what are some of the materials used for like some of these trinkets? Well, we, we live in a actually in an Art Deco apartment, believe it or not, and uh, Art Deco in, in New York like at that age, uh, the era that a lot of the buildings are Art Deco, so that that was very easy to, to kind of set the 
Yeah. We, didn't, we didn't have to do much for the set. In terms of the trinkets, his uh, equipment and stuff, uh, I used a lot of I had a lot of scrap metal from the filmmaking. Like I have old fan pikes and you know and things that that I, that I was able to assemble all the the yeah. devices and the things he used. Um, I'm gonna give you a secret. The the machine that generates the electricity actually the, the, the little round machine. That's a, that's a, an old uh, shoe polish machine. Nice. And we just put a, a little. Uh, we have these shredding things for actually for yeah. mushrooms and for veggies. <laughs> and put them in the yeah. front. So we made a device, yeah. and you know the rest is like the visual effects, uh, the of lighting, course. and all this. Of course. And what was your favorite part of this film? My favorite part, I think, is uh, when he lights up the big uh, the big Tesla coil. Yeah. Uh, that's I think is yeah, the, sure. the icing on the cake where he really gets the thing working. Yeah. And just from a production standpoint, what was your favorite part? So that's hard to say. I mean, I go with Kuno, uh, like you just said. That was the coil. Cool. That's cool, the yeah. coil, yeah. That was pretty good. Um, I really like the beginning too. Um, it was like just the introduction to everything. That was pretty cool in my opinion Thank as well. Um, now, from a production standpoint, like what part was your favorite thing to do? With, um, from, you know, directing, acting, you know, or something like that. What was your favorite part from a production standpoint? Uh, you know, for me, editing is always fun. I am not a big fan of shooting, although I enjoy this this film shooting because it's always a, it's a very physical uh, laborious uh, deed yeah. yeah. filming. Cameras, lighting, set, makeup, moving around. It's it's a very laborious. Scene. So you have to have a crew, which I didn't. We shot it with my wife and myself. Yeah. Uh, so I always enjoy editing because that's when you really see the. The product come into life, the whole thing you can mold it and shape it there. So, and what was the most difficult aspect of making this film? Most difficult aspect. Uh, yeah, we're all used to having most of This is always the logistics of how to film it right, uh, what is going to work. You never know how it's going to turn. You know, no matter how much you pre plan and, and, and pre production, there's so many variables. Uh, we actually did a reshoot because we finished it and I felt something was missing. So we went and uh, did a, the whole scene with the Aurora Borealis and you know, all this was added on later. Yeah, nice. We had to reshoot, do a couple of things, and, and you know, get it. That's, that's, that's pretty interesting. Because I mean, reshoot wise, you're like, you know, some of the small stuff, like maybe close ups or something like that. But uh, for that scene to be uh, a reshoot, that's actually pretty impressive. Like, it went, I wouldn't think of that as a reshoot, to be honest. And yeah, and is this the first film festival you're showing us at? No, this has been, uh, we actually have chosen about 30 festivals. We won uh, Best Directing at the NATAS, National Academy of Technical Science, uh, Television and Science Achievements. It's actually like, a, for the professionals it's called the Emmys. But for students, they don't know what I'll say. So, so it's not us directing. We have a uh, best editing in. It was very recently best, right? Best editing we have. We have best editing. Uh, Flamingo Film Festival, Best Visual Effects uh, Film. Uh, oh, it's a social action year. It's an India Film Festival. We have best editing. And I got about 20, 25 official selection and about 10 nominations. Nice. All of them were deserved, in my opinion. Thank you. And do you have any other film festivals for you to join us soon? Well, I'm planning to submit it to the Cannes uh, uh, oh. short corner, the short film festival, like student. I'm yeah. not sure what's gonna happen. This is like forty-five thousand short films submitted. Um, yeah. I, I, to be honest, I've been playing it very uh, apprehensive. They have. I'm reluctant to submit it to big film festivals because the competition is outrageous, and we're a very small film. We're lucky. The budget was one hundred fifty dollars. Okay. One hundred fifty dollars budget. So what we've achieved with this budget and the story, the story, I think we've done pretty good. Really good. Yeah, no, not pretty. Like really, really good. Like, um, yeah, if you submitted to Kant and uh, yeah, there's like fifty million yeah. submissions there. It's crazy. <laughs> but uh, let's say if you're submitted to Kant and hopefully you get it, I could definitely see like a uh, base studio or uh, manager or whatever saying mm, that looks very interesting. I want to talk to the director, maybe make a feature film. Yeah, he's a pretty good actor. Let's get him on board. You know, like, you know cause that, that happens in like cons and stuff like that. In Cannes Film Festival, especially, um, so, or South by Southwest. So I wouldn't be surprised if that were to happen with uh, your film. And I don't think there's a test, Nikola Tesla biopic. There is one from the 1980s. It's actually very good. I saw it. Uh, however, it's kind of like biopic, and you know, 
just basic math, but there's so much behind Tesla that uh, a lot of people don't know right. his research. That right. that right. if somebody touches on that, will be almost like a yeah. science fiction yeah. film because yeah. the, the, the things that he had is unbelievable. Yeah. Well, it's, it's beyond the scope of our video now to talk about it, but uh, right. Because I mean, maybe aside from a few oh. documentaries and then one film that came out in the '80s, I mean. Not many people really know about Tesla or like care yeah. to figure out about Tesla. My so, experience when I tell when I tell people about Tesla, like uh, yeah. I feel about Tesla, the first thing Americans or anybody in the street, the kids that I talk to, they say, "Oh, it's a car." I said, "No, no." <laughs> and that's what everybody thinks. I, it's I know a car. Yeah, uh, because that's, that's either Tesla car or like Tesla. Who? Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, because I know who Nikola Tesla you know a bit about Nikola Tesla. This obviously yeah. from a bit more about who he was as a person, but but again, I still say Tesla who's a car. You yeah. know, so um. Yeah, I mean, overall, it's a great film. If you are um, ever seen it's cons or like South Southwest or any other big um, film festival, um, first off, hopefully you get in. So, um, second off, hopefully you get some awards. Third off, hopefully a big studio manager contacts you and says, "Hey, you want to make a test of the biopic? Uh, maybe you know, cast you in it, show us how you're going to direct in it. Uh, that's for sure." But yeah, I mean, I or even a TV show, you know, that'd be pretty cool. Um, I'd love to see that to be honest. And yeah, overall, it was a great film. I really enjoyed it, and I think. I think that's it for now. Is there anything else you want to say to the viewers? Well, if some big producer sees this video and uh, would like to hire me, or well, the director, producer, or I mean, uh, editor, whatever, film, act, please let me know, and uh, we'll hire the gentleman too. So yeah, uh, thank you so much. Is there any place where they can find you on Twitter, or Facebook, or anything? Uh, you can find me on uh, Twitter, Facebook, and. Instagram Cayman Sway, K-A-M-E-N-S-W-A-Y. Okay. -E okay, I'll leave all the links down below for those who want to check him out. Um, and hopefully you guys can watch the, the short film pretty soon, whether we got cons, South by Southwest, or any other upcoming film facility he has. And yeah, no, I think this is basically about it. Thank you for for giving me the time and that's basically for now. This is Thank Daniel Mart. Yeah, this is Daniel Mart with Cayman Sway. Signing off.